Welcome to a new tutorial, I'm Andre, and today I'm gonna show you how I edited this picture uh, of Sagrada Familia here in Barcelona and I'm gonna show the end result that I got with this this is the end result of this image and this is the original picture that came straight out of the camera and I'm gonna show you how, how to get this um, this result uh, mainly we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to hide these cranes here and how I balanced a bit the light and changed the colors a bit uh, on this image. So I hope you will enjoy it. If you wanna download this raw file, you can download it from the link that you'll find on the video de description. Uh, it will download the file straight away, so it will not take you to any other website. So you can download this image and uh, start working with this. So the first thing that I wanted to do is light the top part. Um, strangely, uh, it's not illuminated at night. The only lights that lights that you see here come from the inside, the ones over here. And the lights that are on the street. I took this picture, I, I don't know what time it was, about 9 or 10 o'clock and there was no tourists luckily and as you can see all the light that you see here are from the street so the first thing that I did is I used the gradient a linear gradient like that and I just drew a gradient like that and I increased the exposure a bit because the top part was not too illuminated you can increase the exposure a bit and also maybe the black no the blacks will mess up the sky probably the shadows a bit and the whites and this will make make it look a bit more uniform another big problem that we have is this orange tint I don't remember the white balance that I used I tried several white balances but the this, this, um, lights on the street were very very yellow so that's why you got this you can see that you can change the blend the um, temperature from here but we're gonna um, we're gonna fix the color on different, uh, differently now from, from the white balance. So um, next what you can create as well is use the brush if you want to add even more light more selectively like on places like this and over there and then just increase the exposure a bit like that and a bit more over here and over there and Next, um, let's deal with the color. Uh, you will see that here in the center, um, there's the kind of a window here. I used an underexposed shot that I took for that uh, because I wanted to to have this detail there. So um, I use that. Um, make sure you make no corrections uh, on the perspective, otherwise, or if you make a correction. Uh, a distortion correction or if you activate the profile let me see where the hell is that facts lens correction uh, if you make any corrections from here make sure you make the corrections on the other image if you use multiple exposure otherwise they will not match they will um, you will change the size of them and they will not overlap overlap okay so for the color I use the HSL first so HSL mo module for hue saturation luminance and first I dropped the saturation of the yellows a bit and also on the oranges slightly also uh, you can change the luminosity the luminance if you want make make it just a bit uh, darker and on the highlights I want to drop um, drop the highlights a bit just like that and what else on the blacks i'm gonna leave it like that clarity i'm gonna pump it up just a bit and also the vibrance and the saturation uh, the white balance i don't like it the sky it's too um it's too purple but i'm gonna fix that as well uh, well from the hsl actually you can do that uh, you can just click this button and just make sure you're, you're on hue over here click this button and just move that towards towards blue if you want to and saturate it a bit and with the luminance I'm gonna make it darker like that 
And what else? Um, maybe now it's too dark, the yellow. Let me go back to the woman and send. Um, let the light how it was. And probably it's too, too much clarity. I'd rather pump up the contrast. Uh, not that much. Probably like that. Now, um, for me, I like how it looks like that there's people that and there are people that like to edit more in Lightroom I'm more of a Photoshop guy so here I just make a few touch-ups uh, and then I move to Photoshop I'm gonna increase the sharpening and the detail as well and a bit more, less noise <clears throat> and then I, I'm gonna use the um, camera raw filter in Photoshop to further edit this so I'm gonna right click and choose edit in Photoshop CC and I'm gonna wait for it to open in Photoshop. So now that we are here in Photoshop, let's take a closer look. I forgot to remove the chromatic aberrations, but luckily on the structure, there's no, nothing really to worry about. So uh, let's remove the screens. There are lots of ways to do this. And actually the fact that the sky is so uniform can be a disadvantage because every um, even with minor um, color tone changes or or brightness change you will notice it very easily so that for me is not an advantage having the sky like this because it looks uniform but actually if I just um, use the clone stamp tool and I sample from here and put it here you can see that it's visible it's very visible so um, it's not really that much of an advantage having a sky like this, see that? So we have very subtle transitions, so it's kind of hard to, to mask this. Uh, I tried using the Content Aware Move, and I'm going to show you how this works, uh, because it's a really nice tool. And <clears throat> Sorry, uh, it has three um, settings. The mode, which in this case we're going to use Extend. Um, the structure and the color. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use this, you can uh, head over to the website and I'm going to put an article and explain a bit more in depth uh, how that works. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to select the lasso tool. I'm going to, I created a new layer and I'm going to create a selection around this, but I'm going to leave us some space so that Photoshop can blend this properly. So it has some room to work with. I'm going to create a selection like that. And now I'm going to move the selection away over here, maybe like so. And now I'm going to select the content or move tool. Now this, the structure and the color can be changed after you move this here, but I'm going to put it to 10 and this one to about seven. And I'm going to move this now. Make sure you check sample all layers and have the mode to extend. And you're on this new empty layer. And with the selection active, simply click and drag. And you will drag this sky section to over your crane. Now you can change the size of this if you the selection is not good, but that's why I created the selection before I moved it so I know it's the size that I need. I'm going to press enter to accept the change and we'll wait for Photoshop to uh, do the job. And this is what we got. Now, as I said, uh, after I, you press enter, you can change the values here, but uh, it looks pretty good to me. I still see some lines over here, but I can fix that with the clone stamp tool if I want to. And uh, they're still working on this. That's why you see all the uh, cranes and um, stuff around here. They're still working to finish this. Obviously, I'm not gonna remove everything, I am just going to show you how to remove this uh, and that's it. I remember a few years ago when I first visited uh, Barcelona, um, there, there were a lot more cranes than, uh, than you see here on this picture and they're supposed to finish, working, to finish uh, this uh, by 2019, I think, or something like that. Yes. I hope they, they do. Um, the inside is it's amazing. I want to take a picture from the inside, but um, the problem is that you it's hard to photograph it properly because there are lots of tourists. Every day when I 
go uh, I, I live about two minutes away from 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 it so every time I go out on the street I see lots of tourists taking photos and um, things like that so it's hard to, to photograph it actually I have a tutorial uh, showing uh, how to photograph um, monuments and things like that using uh, several um, well, s sequences, uh, or like bracketed shot. Well, not bracketed. Uh, se shooting several images and then blending them together to remove stuff. I'm gonna put a link there so you can so you can watch that tutorial if you want. It's really interesting and it's really it's a quick tutorial. Now, with the, I'm gonna create a layer mask and just mask this out. Oops, with the stronger, uh, harder brush. My hard drive is really slow. I have an external hard drive that I have to buy an, an SSD hard drive. Yeah, it's supposed to work a bit faster. Okay, now for the rest of the uh, things that I'm gonna remove here, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna fast forward because it takes a while. So uh, I'm gonna fast forward and uh, I'll see you when I'm done. I'm gonna use the same tool here to, to do this. So we'll see you in just a second. Okay, I removed most of the stuff around there. I I did it quite quickly. I didn't want to spend too much time on that either, but uh, you can take your time and remove it uh, every single detail of that and uh, make it perfect. Um, what you see around here, these things over here are flare from the light, see here uh, over there. It's flare from the lights that come from the back. So let's uh, let's move on and show you how I uh, recovered this part of here. I'm gonna get the other image, uh, which is underexposed, this one, and I'm gonna add it in Photoshop. I'm gonna crop it and paste it right on top of this. And I'm gonna create an inverted layer mask and I'm gonna drop the density of it a bit just so I can see uh, to adjust this. Now I think it looks okay. Now with the brush, I'm going to paint with the white of this, uh, with a slightly softer brush and just paint over this to recover the well exposed, well not so well exposed, it's still under exposed a bit but uh, we're gonna fix that I'm gonna show you how. I underexposed it on purpose, this part over here, this window. I'm gonna show you why because I wanna rec recreate some lights and we're gonna recover the, the exposure. Uh, these lights over here are actually blue and I'm gonna create a new layer I'm gonna put it on color dodge and I'm going to use the brush. Uh, color dodge looks great uh, for lighting like this that I'm going to make now. And I'm going to use a cyanish color like this. Quite, um, it has to be quite dark. See that? And more saturated. A bit brighter. Like so, and here I have to use something a bit darker. Okay, now it looks better. And now I'm gonna create the light inside of there. I'm gonna use a yellowish tone like so. Let's see if that works well. Great, now you can see the before and after. And I think it looked great now. Um, what else? I would like to correct the distortion a bit. So I'm gonna create a stamp with everything 
I'm merged and I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna choose lens correction. It's not going to be the most precise um, distortion correction, but anyways. I'm gonna use a custom distortion and I'm probably gonna move, let's see. No, I'm not gonna use this, I'm gonna use the free transform and just move this using the distort. I'm gonna move it slightly towards the left like that and because I have the one there on the background you, you cannot you don't see the transition over there see on the edge okay so I'm gonna leave it there you think it looks a bit better than without that distortion and probably crop that from over there and See, I think it looks better. Create a stamp and convert it into a smart object and go to camera raw. Again, this is just like going back to Lightroom actually. So I'm going to camera raw and I'm gonna change the white balance a bit here, the temperature. I'm gonna make it slightly colder and more magenta. And what else? Split toning. Let's see how it looks. More cyan on the shadows. And what else? Maybe some vignetting. Really feathered. And I think I would also like to use the, the exposure. Um, exposure adjustment. And here I can change a bit this like that just to add a bit more of light on the shadows and that's pretty much it the original looks a lot better because it took more time i don't have the layers that i used because i flattened the image but um you can see the colors that i have here on, cam on camera raw there's one thing that you can do uh, here on the camera calibration you can change things quite a lot and create all sorts of uh, interesting effects. I think I have something like that myself there. And you will see the before and after now. And just some sharpening and that's it. Um, so I hope you liked this. Um, I'd like to see your results. Uh, you can edit image and upload it um, if you have Instagram use hashtag PSD box or also on uh, Facebook use the hashtag PSD box so I can see your edit and if you have other photos that you took yourself of, of architecture and night photography I'll be uh, glad to see them and comment it if you if you want so well that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time